Absolutely. These are my two visual aids. We have also the Bible here. You know. So I think that'll My name is Dr. Oscar Garcia Johnson. I'm assistant provost uh, for the Center for the Study of Hispanic Church and Community, and I teach in the area of theology and Latinx study. Today, we're going to be uh, speaking about the book of Genesis. Genesis constitutes a group of ancestral testimonies. And, and the word testimonies for me is important because it, uh, it connects in, in my tradition, uh, in the Latinx tradition, the word testimonios is very important, which has always to do with, with the acts of God uh, in the midst of the people. So the past, the present, and the future are, uh, you know, uh, very important in that in that uh, in that word testimonios, and I think that is something that we can see in the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, we find that God is a God of life. It's a God for life. It's a giver of life, and that is uh, a core um, understanding of the book of Genesis. I think that must inform our personal spirituality as well as uh, our vocation as the people of God in whatever we do. We cannot forget that, that when we speak of Genesis, it, it, it's part of a, of, a bigger, of, of a bigger composition called the Torah. And the Torah, uh, it's, a, it's a composition that is, it was used to uh, communicate to children the story of the origins the genealogy of how God was involved in creating a earth that is worth living. It's a God of life, I continue to say. Since page one, God is involved with this created world. God is always portrayed as a covenantal God. And let's make no mistake here. A God's covenant is with the cosmos as it is with the human beings. There is a covenant of life of sustainability. God is, is the creator of the heavens of the earth, is the creator of the cosmos. We see God's spirit as the, as the agent of transformation, as the agent of life. It's, uh, it's the energy of God sustaining, sustaining uh, uh, living organisms in all possible ways, maturing life in the cosmos out of which human beings emerge as part of creation uh, with the task of like God, image of God, created the image of God, to participate in the flourishing of life. That is what we see in the testimony of creation. Now, we move to another narrative, which is extremely important, and is the testimony of the calling, the calling of Abraham and Sarah. We're in, we're in chapter 12 of the book of Genesis right now. Think for a moment what's happening here in this calling of Abraham and Sarah. An ordinary and disadvantaged Chaldean family. They're calling into an impossible journey to settle in the land of Canaan. This is a story of migration at the core. A story of unprivileged people crossing borders, even working undercover, undocumented, if you will, to survive in Egypt and other Canaanite territories. Life is tough in this uh, particular stage. And the call into a journey to take possession of a promised land that is occupied by other families seems impossible, clearly. This is a complicated story because by any standard, the possession of the so-called promised land implies the displacement of people inhabiting those territories. Land was not empty. If this land is indeed a land provided by God, then... It has to be for the blessing of all the families. And that means that it's for the blessings of the families of the Canaanites as well, not just for one. So it's not just about a, an Israelite uh, community or Israelite uh, reading of the text is, should be, uh, you know, the reading of all the peoples of the earth. This 
account appears as a contrapuntal story, I would argue, of becoming a people in the midst of a great imperial subjugation. Let's remember something. Abraham and Sarah are not a dominant figure in this story. They're not uh, masters, uh, but they are, if I may, uh, a couple of nobodies that have believed God has called them uh, out of anonymity into becoming a flourishing community, not for the sake of one particular race, culture, civilization, but all the peoples of the earth. Genesis, like no other book, unveils or bias ideological, cultural tendencies toward caricaturing God and stealing God's identity on the basis of race, gender, geography, class, and privilege, political preferences. And the root problem is not seen as the disobedience of one single individual. That's pretty much more of a modern concept. But seen as supplanting God's identity and falsifying God's knowledge for the sake of human power and privilege over other humans or other groups, and even uh, creation, submitting creation as a whole uh, to our own uh, power and control. That in itself, it's what originates uh, not just the sin of one individual, but what is called a world system of domination, of impoverishment, of uh, racialization, and of colonization that until today continues to have severe consequences on, on the environment, ecology, genome, economy, and our ideology. So all that, it's part of uh, what we can find in Genesis. And Genesis helped us identify how are we buying into this or becoming, I would say, pers persons that resist and contrapuntually read the Bible and act prophetically against those system of dominations. So there are two dominant images in the book of Genesis. One is the creation of the world. The other one is the creation of humankind. And so I like to remember that the land and people got together because uh, in the history of colonization, the history of Christianization, you have transformed, we have transformed, you know, the land into, into something and sometimes people into objects of evangelization. So uh, this, this is something I, I like to keep, you know, uh, in my own sight when I read the Bible. And this, this Bible here is, is representative of between the earth and the creation of humanity. We usually use the Bible to give interpretation and meaning. And yet, Sometimes we have to uh, read the Bible in a way that um, makes sure that we create unity instead of separation. And that's where, if we can put this together, that creates uh, you know, a, different, a different story. And that's what I see in the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, I see an integrated, a unified version of the world, because that's what, that's what make God the God of life. The book of Genesis is a book that testifies to the God of life.